All right, let's talk for a moment about this, about the project manager. And I will say this is stumbling block number one for people that come from Python or something like that to Visual Studio. So I will spend one or two minutes on that very quickly. Uh, one of the differences between something like Python or some other interpreted language and C++, which uh, trips a lot of beginners, is very simple. It's their relationship with files. Uh, in files, uh, sorry, in Python, you might have your amazing application.py and that gets fed to the interpreter and you practically never see it. And that is your application, your source file and what you're actually executing are the same thing. Uh, similarly, if you have a math module of sorts, uh, that's also going to be your math PI, uh, PY, you import it into your application and this chain of dependency is passed on to the Python executable and again that's it. So you can argue this either way actually. The fact that Python has a one-to-one -one relationship between uh, domains and scopes and files and what gets executed uh, barring you know advanced tricks or setups or whatever uh, makes it very clear for people what they're doing. However, C++ is very different in those regards. Uh, C++, you might have multiple files, which are headers. So uh, you might have a math headers and you might have a math.cpp file and you might have your application.cpp that might or might not have a header and then out of that you might very well have one executable this is what a lot of books that discuss the language uh, or videos for that matter kind of i find uh forget to tell you or elect not to tell you and it's okay because they're focused on teaching you what the language and what the capabilities of the language are or what's included in its standard library or some you know subset of subjects but it is also i find what basically stumps people right away uh, the fact that you can have multiple files and their interactions are not clear and then you have something coming out that's uh, to be executed and it's tough to understand the relationship between those and now while these might be very simple to figure out you know the math header is included in math.cpp and app cpp and you shouldn't do this but you can it includes uh math.cpp and that actually gets built into your app say you know that's pretty straightforward so maybe you know that works out for you but where it gets a bit more problematic if you want is the case where you have something uh, such as your math header and your amazing file generate a lib file and then you have an app header which includes that lib file and you have an app.cpp and that actually generates the exe and in this case uh, your app.exe you know doesn't really include this it's like it includes it statically even worse you could have something where these are provided by somebody else, you don't have the source, you get a DLL. So you link, there's a tenuous link between these as a dynamically linked library, and then your exe also depends on that thing as far as dependency go. And, and that is where it gets tricky, and that is where building basically comes into place. Now Python doesn't... Python code itself, you know, your app.py or your math.py don't really execute anything. They just instruct an interpreter, the actual executable, which was built from something more similar to these of Bait in C and not C++, interprets these things. In C or C++, you don't have that luxury. So you kind of need to understand the build process and what you're getting yourself into and so on. And that is also where the project management aspect, the making, the building, and the managing all of these files of C++ comes into play. And that is why I think it should be taught. It should, you should at least understand more or less what is going on. Now, if this doesn't make sense, don't worry, we're actually going to get into that. That is the meat and bones of what I want to get across. 
but I'm mentioning it a little bit early uh, so that you understand that in C++, your build targets, your, you know, math.dll and your app.exe, and this might come from somebody else and, uh, you know, it might actually in turn contain a lib that's coming from somebody else, but it gets statically linked into it and all of that. Um, this is the reason why project management in C++ isn't as straightforward as it could be. Uh, modules are probably coming in another three years, uh, but um, you have to know what is going on. And that is also the reason why you will encounter your first stumbling block, where a lot of people find this a stumbling block in my experience, which is uh, solution and projects in Visual C++. Uh, so that is where we actually get into this. So if you've run the install of Visual Studio, as I've shown you, and it's a simple thing, and you started it, this is what you get. Uh, you might have a start page. Mine is uh, barren because uh, I don't care for the start page. And if you're coming from Photoshop or Maya, Maya might build you, you a database of directories, but when you open, you open a single file and you're done. You know, you're in Photoshop, you, you open and save a single PSD file and you're done. There's this singular relationship between the file uh, that contains your work and what you're editing and what you save. And it's, it's very streamlined and you don't notice it. You don't have that luxury when you're developing for C++. So a little bit of understanding of how the project itself works is important. Now, Visual Studio does not make that simple. So when you do something like new project, it doesn't say anywhere, new solution. Uh, you will have closed solution and we'll go over it. What you get is some options, console application, desktop application. Don't worry about these. This is, you know, difference between Unix and Windows when they decided to completely mess up the whole console and window application thing. You can start with an empty project. Now here you get the name of the project. And here you get solution name and here you get an actual directory. Let me close this stuff. I should not use a tablet uh, when I'm doing this. So um, it asks you where you want the root location of things to be. And the default is, you know, whether you find it reasonable or not, is the classic operating system friendly way of going like, hey, you're going to have everything in your user. Sure, we can deal with that. This is just the default they give you. It's your username, source repos. Um, or whatever it is that it gives you. It's just a directory, don't worry. Now, if I create a project, let's say that I want to take three different Maya plugins, three different sets of nodes, uh, let's say two to make it easier, uh, an array set of nodes and a math set of nodes, and I want to put them uh, into something that is going to collect all of my nodes. Uh, now, this is where we go back to this. If I were to do something like that, I would want to create, say, Maya math nodes is going to be a single DLL. Maya might call it MLL, but it's exactly the same thing. They just changed the extension for no good reason. And then maybe I'll have Maya array nodes. And as a root category for both of these, maybe for me it makes sense to call these Maya nodes and have all of my Maya nodes projects that will generate the DLL for Maya to load as a plugin under the same umbrella. So this will be a solution and each of these will be a VC project. Now, Hopefully that already clarifies a little bit the difference between a solution and a project. The solution is largely a container of multiple projects. The project is itemized based on the build target and we're simplifying a bit, but this is actually a valid model and this is how it's intended to be used for the most part. Certainly how you will use it as a beginner. Um, the VC projects are actually what matters the most. Uh, now, why would you not have uh, all of them separate, one solution for each project, you can do it. You can do it just fine. That's okay. Uh, that's a perfectly viable way to work. We'll touch a little bit, just a tiny bit on why you might not want to do that and why, why you might care about solutions for multiple projects, but that's for later. So when I'm in here, I'm going to go, okay, the first one that I'm going to work on is actually going to be called uh, Maya Math Nodes. 
And Visual Studio, because I have no solution open, will suggest a solution name. Now, I would actually like my solution to be called Maya Nodes and to be put in that directory. So I go, OK. Now, it will create for me <clears throat> solution Maya Math Nodes with Maya Math Nodes underneath. But I ask for these to be called uh, Maya nodes. So what gives? Now, this is one of the idiosyncrasies of video, uh, Visual Studio, which is kind of crap. Now, if I create another project here, same thing. We don't really care about what's in it just yet. We're just trying to understand the whole uh, solution and project hierarchy. Nothing else. Uh, the other one I said I would want to create is uh, Maya Ray nodes. Now, I could create a new solution, but I could also add it to an existing one. And in here, it's going to tell me my array nodes as a solution name. And it's, you know, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. But what it's doing here, it should be adding it to the solution that's already active. And if you look in here, however, directory name is correct. It's my nodes as we said it should have been. So if I click OK, this is the part that's super confusing for people. And this is because Visual Studio is really crap at these. I do have a solution. That solution is actually called uh, Maya nodes for the directory, but because of the first project that started it, the file itself is going to be called Maya math nodes, which was the first project, but it now hosts both Maya Ray nodes and Maya math nodes. And these are actually proper VC projects, which is what I wanted from the beginning. So don't panic just yet. Um, <clears throat> and this is where stumbling block number two will come in, I reckon, uh, which is a lot of people become really wary and really careful around these files and go like, oh, if I change anything, it's going to break. Now you can mess with this stuff uh, pretty easily. So I can change the name of my solution here. Now, if I hit shift control S, it should save everything, including all the solution files. And it will uh, save all, should save this, but if you want to be sure, save the solution like that. And now you can see that my Maya notes directory finally has the solution with the right name because I changed it in here and it still contains my two sub projects and I'm good to go. This is it. I don't know. I have no idea uh, who at Microsoft thought that it was a good idea to complicate it and make it so buggy. That's it. You're good to go. That's all you needed to know. Let's uh, review for a second. You create a new project. It can only exist within a solution. So you have to name that solution. You have to give it a root directory. When you give it a root directory and uh, a solution name that is different than the project name that you're actually creating, because remember, you can only create projects. Uh, and I don't believe you can even create an empty solution, but that's irrelevant. Then it will save a directory. It will create a directory with the right node, uh, with the right name. Maya nodes in my case, and start putting stuff in there. Then it will create the subdirectory with the name of the project I wanted, and in there it actually names and places the project properly. But it will create your solution with the wrong name. The file, the SLM file, will be named like the first project that you had created inside that solution. To add to the confusion, if you create new projects in there, like we did with the Maya Ray nodes, it will suggest that the solution is going to be called that when you choose to add to the solution, but it's actually adding to whatever solution is current. So create a new project, name the solution. If you want it to be a multi-project solution, whatever you want it to be right away, rename that solution from here, save the solution and you're gonna be good to go. These projects are fine. Uh, you can now choose which one is active and which one to build. Uh, I can build both of them and all of that. That's it. Don't ask me why they decided to make it so buggy when it's so important and it's been like that for a long time. Um, but it's pretty harmless. All you need to know is where the bugs are or where these odd behaviors are and how to deal with it. So. Stumbling block number one, I hope we took it down. Uh, last review, remember the difference between Python or whatever language you come from, which is probably sensibly scoped to files in a way you understand, and C++ is 
C++ cares about the result file a lot and a lot less about the source files that will get to that result. So for each result file, each build target that you need to create, you will need a project, you know, Maya Math Nodes, creating a DLL for Maya to load as a plugin, Maya Ray Nodes, same thing. And if you want them to interact in any way or for the sake of neatness to keep them more or less in the same region of your drive, whatever, put them into the same solution, job done. All right, with that explained, I hope uh, that this is good enough that we can start having a look at why this is important, what these various file types are, uh, maybe getting the simplest possible type of file compiled or something like that. And we will extend a tiny little bit in the next video about uh, why you could actually want a solution other than for the sense of neatness of having all your different nodes plugging in the same subdirectory, uh, sorry, in the same top directory, uh, why you might want to actually have a solution with multiple files.